Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman, market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com and this is the Forex Weekly Outlook for the week of October the 3rd, 2011. Now to get started this week we're going to begin where we always do at the US dollar index. We can see that uh, I've been talking about a breakout on this dollar index for basically several weeks now, probably uh, a month and the dollar index has progressed quite nicely. Now looking at our resistance levels up here you can see that I have this line drawn across at about 79 uh, approximately 79.80 we'll say. You can see how the market has pushed above that. Then it has come back and retraced exactly to that area approximately three times and then pushed higher. That again is a very bullish maneuver. Now looking at things as we always do, looking at seasonal patterns, we can see a year ago to, to pretty much to the date the dollar went on a very strong rally between essentially October and January of then again October of last year and January of this year. Now what I want to point out here is that these seasonal patterns certainly do carry some weight. Now when we look at this from a year over year basis we can see these lines that I have drawn down here that when the market when the dollar index sold off when it went back up we had a higher low now what we're seeing is higher highs this is not indicative of of, of a bearish move it, it suggests that we have room to extend on this rally so I would continue to look to buy dollars on dips that's the general theme for the week however we do have a, vent, a very serious event risk being of course the the non-farm payroll number on Friday my opinion is uh, the dollar is going to bounce around all over the place and at the end of the day it's going to retrace and then we're likely to see further gains. If not this week, then definitely next week. So that is the likely outcome. Like there, Now there's a number of different things that can happen with that, but again it's a fundamental announcement. But the reality is whether we get a, a good non-farm payroll or a bad non-farm payroll, the outcome has pretty much been the same each time. The dollar is rallied in in looking at the monthly pattern. Now we're we're using a seasonal pattern. Also, we can see that the dollar is likely to rally in the first uh, week and a half of each new month. Now, how does this compare to the equity markets? This is something we want to look very closely at when we're doing intermarket analysis in real time. We can see with the S&P 500, I have the same type of lines drawn here. You can see a huge base sitting at about 1350. We've had a big sell-off. This was a very good call uh, from vantage point. We've then come up and retraced. We've hit a level and then sold off again. We can we uh, can surmise here the triple EMA cross did not complete, and then it sold off. This time it came back up again, but it came up to a lower level. We again sold off the triple EMA cross. Once again, not completing, we go down lower. When we come back up, each time we're coming back up, you can see that this is very much like a stepping stone that I talked about on the Euro-US currency pair, where the analysts were saying Euro-US is going to 150. I was saying it's going the other way. This chart looks just like the Euro-US, to be perfectly honest. And, you know, we can see each week what we're seeing is a, a midweek relief rally after a big sell-off. But the likelihood that this is going to break the 1100 mark is very, very strong. So uh, any move higher in the S&P 500, definitely I would be using that to set shorts. In my respectful opinion at this particular junction, uh, if we can clear 1231, 1235, somewhere in that area, the, the pressure will be off the downside on these equities. But under the current economic situation, I just don't see that that's a likely outcome. Looking at the predicted MACD and the predicted TSI, we can see that we've run up against the trigger, but it's bouncing off the trigger to the downside and it's moving lower. Our predicted short, medium and long term differences, these proprietary indicators from vantage point, they're at trend ready levels. They're suggesting that the S&P 500 is, is not oversold in the least and it's getting ready for a much, potentially a much bigger move. Now, what is that going to do to the forex market. Well, that's going to put further weakness on your commodity currencies, your, your euro, Swiss franc, and potentially even the British pound. Now, the British pound is a is a tricky one. It's been uh, actually holding its ground quite well. So, 
let's have a look at some of the other things that we've talked about in the previous presentation. I suggested last week in, in the uh, Forex Weekly Outlook, the 10-year notes would come under pressure as the dollar extend its gains. You can see that that is exactly what happened. The 10-year the notes sold off as the dollar went higher. This correlation will remain in place. Now, it's been a very long time since we've had a triple EMA cross on this 10-year note, and you can see we're just about complete here. So this suggests that the dollar has room to extend its, its gains, and the 10-year note is going to move lower. What does this translate into gold? We say, well, gold I've talked about with my own clients and I've talked about on the Forex Weekly Outlook for several weeks that uh, gold is very difficult. People, it, it seems to be split down the middle whether gold is a bubble or whether it isn't a bubble. Uh, my respectful opinion is uh, they talk about, well, mon printing money, printing this, printing that. Uh, I'm, I'm unclear where the value in gold really is. It, when we look at gold closer, the fact of the matter is gold is worth what we say it's worth and if the market bias suggests that gold is worth 2000 an ounce then that's what it's going to be but on the flip side of that if the market decides that this is a bubble and gold is not worth this kind of money then just like the US dollar or the euro or anything else the gold can sell off very very aggressively but unlike the currency markets the gold can sell off at an accelerated pace this is why most of your bigger money managers have maybe two to four percent of the portfolio in gold and that's it uh, you know I've 